We're now going to look at some best practice on harvesting sites. This is important because there's a lot of harvesting going on in Scotland right now. Harvesting operations can present a high risk of causing pollution to the water environment. You have heavy machinery on a slope on top of loose soils with rainfall, which can mobilise sediments and lead to pollution in the roadside ditches. We'll now show you some examples of best practice water management on harvesting sites. We're um, in Galloway Forest District um, in the southwest Scotland and we're standing here on uh, a, a site which has been harvested to remove the larch which was diseased with the Phytophthora remorum um, and that presents a particular problem when we're dealing with water management on harvesting sites. Obviously there has to be an understanding of how you're going to harvest the site, an understanding of what water you've got on site um, and the impact that that has further down the water course. Um, you know, there are situations where there are different species that might be affected by any pollutant that comes into that water course. I've got a mayfly here on this stone, and again a mayfly is a good indicator of excellent water quality. You can see them on my finger there, and where you find mayflies it's very important that forestry operators put in place good management practices to protect not only the mayflies, but other aquatic invertebrates that are very important for fish to feed on. Here we are John, this is what I was mentioning earlier on um, with the roadside drain, this is the edge of the, the live site here, this is an old site and we've just put in this terram sump here uh, because obviously we're getting runoff coming down the drain, uh, the risk is that that keeps going, gathers more volume and ends up causing a problem for the watercourse further downstream. Um, two stages, um, slightly shallower where it enters there, you can see the amount of silt that's gathered there. By the time the water gets over in the second sump, it's dry now, of course, but there's very little silt there. Mm -hmm. And it does the job very quickly, prevents any of that sediment getting downstream, causing some of the problems that you alluded to earlier on with mayflies. If that sort of material ends up uh, in the rivers, can cause serious problems for the, 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 the fauna there. It's doing a job. You can see it's settling out that heavy clay material that would blind the spawning beds of fish and also it would smother invertebrates as well. So this is a, a definitely an example of good practice and one to deploy in other sites. Mm -hmm. You see, John, where the timber stack here, we've cut off the drain at this point, uh, rather than running straight down the hill, brought it under the road in the conduit. Um, and heading into a more, an area of vegetation where the, anything uh, will soak away in there. Uh, and if we walk across there, we'll see there's a, a silt trap in there as well. So you can see we've cut the, the drain, brought it under the road and into a sump here, and then into a, a drain running off and slightly uphill into some vegetation down there. This is good, Graham, from a pre-planning point of view because you've identified the roadside ditches as being a risk to the watercourse in terms of conveying the use pollution. You've disconnected the two ditches, you've put in sumps and you've now directed all your dirty water onto this natural vegetation area just down here. You can see the intention was that the, the drain here would run the water off slightly uphill into that vegetation. The fear was that um, that was getting a bit close to the water course. Um, we also felt that it's worth actually putting in an extra mitigation, actually putting uh, a silt trap here. And you can see it has trapped quite a bit of silt, um, which has, has just allowed the water then to run off into the vegetation up here, a little bit further away from the water course. And it just provides that, that extra um, sort of safety feature, if you like. Again, that, that's good to hear, Graham, because you've not only got the vegetation here, you've also got the 10 metres of vegetation on the downstream end as well, again, to protect that water course. So that's, that's good practice. Knowing how you're going to be harvesting, obviously making sure that you communicate to the contractor that's working on site or the operator that's working on site um, what issues are going to be caused by that, that pollutant potentially uh, and making sure you have your mitigation in place beforehand. Um, don't wait until the problem occurs. Um, you know, if, if you can uh, see that there's going to be a problem with uh, potential runoff, then put a silt trap in. Um, you know, stop it before it happens. You can see in this example here, John, this is uh, quite a clear indication of the amount of silt that's been captured um, as you come through the, the pipe here, the sump, um, the drain here, and then the uh, silt trap at the end. It has captured an awful lot 
and anything that gets past there then runs off into the vegetation and is causing hopefully nothing any harm because the sphagnum will filter that out. Uh, but it's just quite a, a clear um, indication of, of how much can be captured in these circumstances. It certainly has worked well. The, the sump itself and the channel which has acted as a sump has certainly settled out a lot of that thick clay material and certainly I would call this just another example of good practice. Today I'm down in the Galloway Forest Park in South Scotland. I'll be talking to one of the foresters about what he's done to manage water on his harvesting site. We're at Glen of the Bar uh, and this was a harvesting site that we had to work in uh, the winter months due to various operational constraints. Challenges for this site, we had the Palnia burn, uh, which is a very, very sensitive burn. We had a seven stain cycle route that cuts through, uh, the, through the middle of the coop. We've had a site that is pretty, about 90% larch on a, on a steep slope as well. We meet up with the, with the merchant and the harvesting contractor and we, we walk the site, we look at constraints, how we can overcome those constraints, uh, what they would require from the Forestry Commission, what we require from them, uh, and then we, we formulate a plan. Um, it, it can work over two or three meetings. We met with SEPA as well uh, for any mitigation that, we, that we, we were thinking of putting in, see if it was uh, appropriate. Um, and then, that, then we uh, got, move on to the harvesting stage after that. So Joe, we're here on site looking at how to implement the forest and water guidelines. Can you tell us what we're going to see here? Yes, we've got the, uh, the main extraction route, we've got a uh, sleeping policeman location and we've got sumps that we installed on site to catch any sediment as well. So here we have our main extraction route. It's, uh, you'll notice it, it hits the forest road at about 45 degrees to, uh, to prevent chewing the road up and, and having sediment run down the road. And you'll notice the amount of material we've left in the brash on the larch sites uh, to keep them above the, the soil level to try to protect that soil as well, stop sediment running. It's important to make sure the brash mat is clean, isn't it? Yes. And if it's not, it indicates that the sediment is running like downhill. Yes. Good, thanks. Let's go and see something else. Yes. Okay. We have these coloured poles by the road. Are they part of the planning process? Yeah, I've put these in as a visual marker to the forwarder driver so he doesn't stack over a culvert. Uh, it just stops uh, any, any sediment dropping in from if, when the trucks lift the, lift the timber. Plan the site, walk it and walk it again and try to imagine where any sediment might is a, would be aiming for and put your mitigation in there before work starts. I've seen some good examples today of what the forester has done to manage water on his harvesting site. We're down in Galloway, we have a lot of rainfall here, but he's planned what he wants to do and has done a good job of keeping to forest and water guidelines. We hope this film has been useful to you to help you look after your water and soil resources in your forests. More detailed information is freely available from your local forestry commission and your local SEPA office. Thanks for watching.